Welcome to a new episode of Talking About Books. Today's guest, Yves Cote, a BWF referee and Badminton Panam and referee assessor. Thank you, Ricardo. Welcome all. Very nice to have you here. Hoping that all of you and your family are in good health and with the prevention that we need at this moment. And at this moment, I would like to thank again Yves, Yves Cote. His, uh, his uh, first uh, presentation was excellent and no doubt here we will have another very good presentation. And also, please, uh, we are welcoming your questions. Any doubt you have, this is the right moment to, to go through them. And uh, Ricardo, thanks for putting everything in place on this. And uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the second session. The goal of this one is to look at a very important document that is called Prospectus. We'll be looking into this. Uh, this prospectus that you have received is a real one from a tournament where I was the head referee. Uh, when I prepared it, I placed some mistakes in it. My main reason for that is I want this to be a learning tool. Uh, and we will go through that page by page. I'm telling you this right away. Everything that is written in the Thai language is right. As I cannot type or read that language, I did not touch it. Um, after that, we'll talk, I mean, we, we will go page, one page at a time, checking different mistakes and that why I, why I, I did these things. We'll talk about ranking and seeding uh, because this is also important on this. Um, after that, there'll be some questions. Uh, some questions that some of you had either on this or on other things. And uh, we will have after that one or two videos uh, of uh, things that happen in, uh, in tournaments. And uh, so it's easier for the, uh, it will be easier for the officials, for the referees to understand uh, how to deal with this, with these issues. Before I start on the prospectus, uh, I want you to, to understand this thing. We are at all times dealing with people. We are managing people. And to this effect, it is very important for all of us, if we don't know how to deal with people, we must learn how to deal with people. This is very important. If you are friends with the people who are in the different clubs, in the different organizations, you will see that it is way easier if you have a difficult issue to deal with them. If on the other end, the relations between you as a referee and somebody from a country, if this is not good, then if there's an issue, you will have difficulty dealing with it. So, this being said, uh, Let's go with the prospectus. Ricardo, please pick somebody in the group and see if we can identify mistakes in the, on the first page. Daniel, Daniel Delfaro. Uh, hi, Ricardo. <coughs> hi, Yves. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for me, in the point number, number four, uh, is missing the city uh, of the view. Uh, for example, uh, here in, in the um, uh, Bangkok is very bigger. I have different municipalities. For me, the venue is may have the uh, address, but uh, missing the city. This is one point for me. Um, and okay. It's okay. 
in uh, in uh, that's in the point number four. Uh, yes. This the way it is written. Okay, the way it is written. Uh, it's understood by those who have this that it will be in uh, in Bangkok. So the, there is not mistake there in uh, in the venue. It's this this uh, stadium is known uh, by everybody. Everybody knows where it is uh, in um, in uh, Bangkok, and this is they just have a different way. Of, uh, of writing their street address uh, or not. But the, the, the way it is written there is perfectly fine. Did you find other mistakes on, uh, on page one, um, uh, Daniel? Sorry, I don't listen well, teacher. Uh, can you repeat me? Did you find other mistakes on page one? If you haven't, it's no big deal. We'll just go to somebody else. The name of the, the person, a specific person, to have some problem to me. Which uh, which which number is that? One. Number one. Yes. Everything is fine there. Okay, I'll tell you. The first mistake is in point number three. You won. <laughs> so. In point number three, this is the first mistake. If you look, if you read it, Tuesday, January eighteen to Sunday, January 13th. Ah, yes. It's okay. number eight. No, no, 18. Eight. Right. This is, this, is a, this is a small mistake, but you have to remember this. Whatever is in the prospectus is what we go by. Okay? Here, the dates have been changed. It's not the 18th, it's the 8th. Oh, but no big deal. Okay? It's important that we do this exercise so it's easy for you afterwards. You will have an idea, oh, I have to check every, every little thing. I have to check every little detail. Okay. And on page one, there are two other mistakes. Okay. Number four, it's fine. Number five, five is fine. This is the information that is given to us. So I will suppose that Paisan and Natai, this is their name and this is their email address. Next thing, point number six. They're a mistake. Yves Cote from Peru. Yves Cote from Peru. Yves Cote is not from Peru. Yves Cote yes. is from Canada. So this is a mistake. Okay, uh, so teacher, you the document. Um, you receive the document. You have to make sure that everything about you is right. That email address was changed for me after I went to after I went to China because my 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 Gmail account when I was in China I could not get it, so they had to get it through a phone and they lost my password, the password that they gave me. So anyway, it was easier for me to get a new email address. So, but now this is the right email address. Sorry, teacher. Yeah. Uh, this is email, in the other point, I am more in front, uh, it's different, you email, can I have if uh, 38, the other 38 and the two number more. What is right, that uh, or the other? Uh, this, this one is the right one. Okay. This one is the right one. But I'm glad that you said that, Danielle, because this is a mistake in the other one. And of course, uh, okay. I did on purpose. Okay, point number six, the, the ladies, Barbara, that's her right email address. Point number seven, 
Is there any mistakes in it? Anybody? Yes, uh, I see the the size of the draw. Okay. Because, oh, sorry, because say that the main round is a uh, twenty-eight players. Yeah. And qualifier six players. And so, where's the point? And in the main round format, is uh, thirty-two in all events. And thirty-two in all events. Yes. Uh, 28 more six players is 34. Right. So remember this. The main draw is always a number that is a power of two. Not a multiple of two, a power of two. Yeah. So if you look at maximum entries for qualifying round, it's also power of two, 16 and eight. So very good to, very good to notice that. Okay, that's all for the first page. Let's go to the second one. So it should, it should be qualifying four, shouldn't it? Because you, I have one qualifier per eight spots. It's not main draw of 24 and six qualifiers. It would be four qualifiers. There's four qualifiers, yeah. All the qualifiers, thank you, Ian. Uh, all the qualifiers are four, yes, not six. Yeah, I changed them. Okay, next page, page number two. Anybody found uh, any uh, anything in there? Start time of qualifying round should have been 9 a.m., not 1900. Yes, that was a mistake. Okay, so as you can see there, thank you, Ian, the qualifying round start after the main round, which is impossible. All the qualifyings must be played before the main round start. Okay, so it is very important. That's a good, that was a good one. It was noticed. Okay, anything else? Yes, um, if, yes, if uh, Leonardo, Leonardo has a question. Leonardo, please. I'm, I'm listening, I cannot hear. Yes, I asking him to unmute. Okay. Okay. Okay, Leonardo. Uh, it was the last point when where he says that uh, if uh, is from Peru, that's yeah. why I I raised my hand. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Would you bring up the inconsistency in formatting of playing times, where you've got different hyphens and spacing and stuff, or not? No. Okay. Anything else on point on scheduling point number eight? No. If you notice the six courts on Wednesday, there's only four courts at that venue. So that was a mistake also. You cannot uh, have no. only four courts. There's only four courts. For Wednesdays in the main draw, it is four courts, not six. The Wednesday is four court. The, the four mistake court. is the six. Yes, instead of six. So, again, whatever we write in the prospectus is what we go by. So that's why it's very important that we that we check this. Uh, if you look on Saturday, Saturday uh, semifinals, two courts. Okay. On two courts, often in 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 bigger tournaments, often they will play on two courts. They will play the following way: eight matches on TV court, 
and two matches on the other court. And the, and reason, the, for, feature, the reason for that is very simple. It's a must have some TV time. And there's, there's a certain number of matches that have to go on TV. And the, the number of matches on TV has to be respected. As there's usually it's 29 matches on TV. So if you take five for the finals, you are left with 24. So semi-final, eight matches, quarterfinals, eight matches, second round, eight matches. If the week. date is also wrong, it Sorry. says Saturday, Saturday, January. 22nd, yes. I have it. Saturday, the date is wrong. Saturday, January. January 22nd. Is the schedule time on Wednesday correct then with only four courts? Because I actually ran the numbers with six doing 30 minutes per match and it would, would have been very close to the six courts. Sorry, sorry, Ian. Sorry, if uh, there is someone with the microphone on. I think it's Elio. Elio, do you have any, any question, comment? No, what um, what uh, Ian mentioned is that uh, on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday we only play on four courts, and uh, start time at nine o'clock. We cannot start before nine o'clock, unless something exceptional happened during the tournament and we must modify the schedule but otherwise we can never start before nine o'clock so the start time is nine o'clock and the, the the finish time is a a suggested number okay some matches are fast as you know others are a little bit uh, are a little bit longer so the other mistake on that one was Saturday, January 22nd. It's January 12th. So that was, that was the mistake. Anything else on page two? Is it reasonable to um, actually expect players to be called 30 minutes before the scheduled match time? That's more than I've normally seen published. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is reasonable. It is reasonable, but it has to be mentioned at the team manager's meeting. Okay, because it's always, like if you look at the very last line, line of point seven, it's written and will be announced by the referee. So, you know, alterations, competition schedule, do television coverage, blah, 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 but it's always, and will be announced by the referee. So if there are changes, it will be announced. I'll give you an example. In um, 2015, I was in coaching Malaysia and uh, we were using four courts. We were during the raining season and we lost the use of two courts for about a full day. And just as we lost the two courts, everybody started to play three gamers that lasted an hour and a half. So I had to do something about it. So alteration to the competition schedule. That's what I had to do. And, and I discussed with the tournament organizers, with the BWF, and we talked okay about if we move these matches from the from the wednesday afternoon to that time uh, so we tried to do the best we could why is because we had an emergency situation that's all 
go. And I said to the coaches after that, when I talked to them, I said, it's very important that you understand this. I just have two courts right now. And the player safety is my first priority. If it's raining on the court, you're not going to be playing there. There's absolutely no question. Because it's not the organizers that will be responsible. It's me. And there's no way that this will happen. So we started to look at different scenarios. And you have to understand this. Malaysia is a Muslim country. Friday morning is prayer time. Most of the officials, line judges, umpires from Malaysia are Muslims. Therefore, we cannot have them for that time. So we had to we, we had to deal and discuss and because we had no choice but playing on Friday morning. So you know emergency situation. If something happens, we have to deal with the situation. Okay, page two, anything else? Anybody else? Ian. Um, it, are the conditions of, the conditions of play just seem to be out, out of order and not quite bulleted properly. I'd have probably done each item as a, a bullet point instead of a continuous paragraph and the, the, yeah, I know. In, in the event of the dispute would have been the uh, decision of the referee will be final would be the final point. Yeah. I know that was that was written that way. It they could not place it anywhere else. I had talked to them about that. Anything else on that? Uh, on this? Point number twelve is a mistake. Item twelve. Item 12, Monday, January 7, 28, January 2019. And then you have 2,200 hours for the team managers meeting when the uh, accreditation finishes at, at 6 o'clock. Maybe that should be a lot earlier. That's a lot sooner than that. You're absolutely right. Suggested time. Suggest, thank you, PJ. Suggested time for the team managers meeting is 5 o'clock six o'clock suggested time. right we do everything we can to go around that if we can do it at four o'clock you know we'll do it but generally it's five or six o'clock we will never never put a team managers meeting that late this is the referee's responsibility so it's important that you understand that it's five or six o'clock now. Follow up with the. Um... I had an I had an emergency situation a few years ago in Aguas Calientes when there was an earthquake. So you know teams did not show up. Others came late. So we had to discuss again emergency situation. Then this is the discretion of the referee, but we tried to make it. So it looks fairly good for everybody. Mistakes in there. It's, it's same to the, the meeting coach. In the point number 13 is the, the official meeting is 11 in the night. It's, it's very late. You're, you're absolutely right. The technical officials meeting is most of the time follow the team managers meeting so it should be one hour after so six seven o'clock is usually a very very good time okay um, teacher what do you say about the the meeting of the tango official um between the start the the first days of competition or or you prefer is the two meetings, the coach and the official is together. 
No, two meetings. Sorry? Two meetings. Two meetings. Co coaches, team managers in one, officials in another one. Always. Okay. Always. Okay. Anything else on page three? The uh, date for world ranking date for seeding in section 14 should be Tuesday the 11th of December? Yes. No, no, it's fine. That's the exact one. The, the, the new one has changed this, but at that time the, cha the, the date was right. This, the date, the December, the 4, is... December 4 is right. But it's 2019, which is after the tournament. That's, uh, yes. All the dates have been changed on this one. All the years have been changed on section 14. It should right. actually be 2018. That's the mistake. But all the other dates were, are uh, exactly dead on, as set by the BWF. But there has been a change in, in the ranking orders after that. Or for, for the date. So but on this one, it was all right. Okay, uh, good. And it, it, there's no more on that page. If you want to know, keep going, Ricardo, please. International entries, okay. Uh, keep going, keep going. And you'll see what, some Thai pretty soon. Uh, if, well, one question, please. Yeah. Uh, what is the better, uh, the first meeting, if the technical official or the uh, the coach? Um, um, we, um, we, um, are, we are in the habit of doing, uh, doing the team managers first, followed by the officials. Uh, now, uh, they're considering, they're considering of doing officials before. But again, this is, it, it's hard to set this because uh, uh, usually the umpires arrive on that day. And because of, of, of traveling everywhere, it is not always possible to have the uh, meeting before the coaches. Yes. Okay, they will try to have it but it's not always possible. That's okay. okay. Okay, thank you. And like I said, everything that is written in Thai, in the Thai language is uh, perfectly fine. Okay, keep going in this. Uh, you're on page four, good, keep going. Go to page five. We're on page five, okay. Do you see any mistakes so far on page five? This is Your a mistake. Country your, your email is very different than the other email in the first yes. point number, number three or two. Or, yes. Don't remember. So my country referee, Eve uh, Cote, yes, Peru, it should be Canada. And this is the wrong email address. So even, even if it was written before, you still have to check. And that happened to me in one tournament. I had two different email address when I received the prospectus. So as part of me going through this whole thing, it's very important that we look into this. So yes, this is a mistake. That's, my, that's not my right email address. My right email address, you remove the seven and the four. The rest is fine. The withdrawal. Withdrawal date is also 2019. It should be 2018. It should be 2018. Yes, that's that was on that was the, the next point on this one. Yes, you're absolutely what, December 17. Yes. One, one question. Yes. Uh, you put the 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 new cell phone number or the WhatsApp number. Uh, in, in, in this case, or for, for the tournament? Um, for example, I accident in the night and you, you need to give you your number. Okay, I will answer this one. 
right i will answer this one right away because i know that one of you had sent uh, had sent me an email about this the phone number that you put on the on the team managers meeting in one of the slides is either your phone number or the number of the phone that the tournament will provide you with often in tournaments uh, they will provide you with a tournament and the number is already entered so they will give you this they will say this is the number we want you to use because we have sent this information to all the team managers and you said okay uh so that's just the way it is uh some referees still prefer to use their own which is also another possibility there's two ways that you can in that case there's two ways that you can join um that you can join that you can be joined the other questions that happened that arised was now they have your phone number and they have your email and they can get in touch with you uh, yes it is very important a few years ago i had a player that was in in woman singles that was sixth on the reserve list contacted me and say well i'm my name is and i'm sixth on the reserve list uh, is there a way that you can tell me if there will be an opening because i have to book plane ticket uh, hotel and blah 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 and so my answer i answer right away i said as of now you are still on number six on the reserve list if there are withdrawals that happen and your your ranking on the reserve list changes you will be informed as soon as we can today i mean with the with the internet and everything it goes very fast you know i received uh, i received the notice of withdrawal i send the information to the bwf or to pan am this one has withdrawal this means that this one is the first qualifier will now be in the main draw and we send the information right away so if there's a reserve list then the person that is second on the reserve list we said you are now number one on the reserve list and so we we that's how we deal with with this it has to be with information that is from the tournament anything else sorry i cannot answer this if you cannot answer this if they disagree with the ranking with bwf or anything you just said please contact bwf here's the person in charge of this tournament you know uh i'll uh, i mentioned this uh, just before the meeting started with uh, with uh, herman and I said, look, even though it was written in the prospectus, I had a coach that told me, why isn't there, why is there only four seed in all the events at the Pan Am Juniors? I said, sir, that was written in the prospectus, and this is the Pan Am regulation for the Pan Am Juniors. If you have any questions about this, please talk to Herman Valdez okay and then the person went and talked to herman and they discussed because because we were at the tournament but if we're not at the tournament then email nowadays and i just will send i will send and say okay that's just the way it is okay ricardo keep going page uh, six i think most of everything is in thai so I have not touched that. Uh, yeah, keep going. Keep going. Go through page uh, seven. Let's go to page eight. Page eight, there is a mistake. 
Anybody? The cancellation fee. Cancellation fee. 150%. It will cost you one and a half time what you should pay to cancel. This is wrong. Most of the time, it is 50%. In fact, that number was 50%. I just added a one before. Okay, keep going. Next page. Item 26. Okay. Item 26. Item 26. What What is it all about, PJ? The, the doping. Why are we telling the players what day we're testing? Exactly. Exactly. In the referee, you will know, as a referee, you will know ahead of time if there is doping control or not you must still in in your powerpoint presentation you have to talk about doping control okay you have to say even if you know you're totally aware of the fact that there will be no do doping control you must mention there is a possibility. Why? It's because the doping agencies can come in a competition. They can go to uh, an athlete before they start to play. They can go to the hotel. Okay. So the way to solve that for us on the referee side, there is a possibility that we will have open control. As of now, I, I do not have a date, but there is a possibility. Now, you never tell them when it will take place. Never, never, ever. Even if the, the doping control is targeted, you receive the list and, and as the referee, you will be the only one to receive this. The deputy referees will not know when. So even if you know when it takes place, you keep that to yourself. When the people come, you meet with them, you discuss, and they are showing you their list. We are doing this. This is targeted. This is Johnny and Billy and Andrea and uh, Michelle. Okay, that's just the way it is. Remember this with doping also. They can go when they want and ask for a sample. What we suggest to them is please, 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 please. Do everything you can. So it is after the last match of the, of the players. And I will tell you, 99% of them will, will go that way. At the end, there's always one that was, no, I want to do it now because I have other things to do. This is not your concern. Once they have entered the building once the anti-doping people have walked into the building and they have introduced themselves to you as the referee. You must tell them when, with regards of the players that were targeted or drawn out of the hat, um, you tell them this is how, uh, this is when is their last match. This is what we suggest. Otherwise, there's nothing we can do. Okay, well, that was the... yes, Ricardo. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I have a an input there. Yeah. So this is for individuals, but when we talk about team events, is quite different because when you receive the list, is the winner of a specific match. So you have to wait until this this match yeah. happen, yeah. and then and then will affect all the schedule or maybe if you have some kind of of delay in your in your schedule it will it will it will take time for that yeah. no yeah even if you if you tell them that 
that maybe they can do it is yeah. is very different individuals it, and teams. Yeah, I know. It's it's very seldom that it happens, Ricardo. But I agree with you. You know, uh, this is the the loser of the women's doubles uh, second semifinal. Okay, because that was selected that way. And well, which name do you want? The first one on the list, the second one on the list. So usually it's, you know, the first one on the list. Yeah. So, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. We do the Thanks. Best, we, with doping, we do the best we can with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Eves. Good. So that covers, that covers this mistakes that I intentionally put in the prospectus. Uh, the rest is, uh, the rest I have not touched, I, I am telling you, because there's some legal terms and I did not want to, uh, to touch this uh, and everything written in Thai, I did not want to touch. Okay, so uh, now, uh, Senor uh, Salamanca, if we can go to uh, rankings and seedings. I know that this was sent to, uh, this was sent to everybody. Um, I, uh, the seeding and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, the ranking and seedings that you, you, you have received and that, uh, uh, hopefully Ricardo puts on the screen soon. Um, it, it's very important that you look into this. The, my only reason to, to place them there is to make sure that you always have a look at this. Absolutely, absolutely have a look at this. Because they say, as of week, blah, blah. Okay, as of the end of the second week, as of the end of that week, this is when the world ranking is, or the Pan Am ranking in, in that case. So we, we want to make sure that we are doing this properly. Uh, you must check every single name okay because if they have made a mistake you have to inform the uh the, the tournament uh, supervisor in my case uh once i received once i received from bwf uh the bwf world ranking based on the end phrase uh you know version one then if somebody withdraw then I receive another one, version two. And, but on the very first one, I have to check every single end phrase that is there. Now, some have no world ranking. So obviously it might be their very first, their very first tournament. And uh, in the, for them, I have to rely on the information that is given to me, but, uh, let's say for a, a per in in a four year period when i would have had looked at the uh, at the world ranking uh, when when uh, Li we spent 199 weeks in a row as the number one uh, every time i looked he had to be the number one on on the list why because he has the number one ranking that's all so there when we're looking on the left, one, two, three, blah, blah, okay, up to up to 20 that I see now. And now from December 8, version three, from December 18, world ranking updated. Well, Lindan is the first one on my list, but he had world ranking number 13, followed by Koshit who had 16, and the other Thai guy, 17, 20, and Jorgensen from Denmark, 29. So I have to make sure that all these follow the order. In singles, it's no big deal because they are just they are just following this. Okay. So and you see Igor Trello from Brazil at that time at the 46 ranking in the world. Okay, good. Keep going, keep going, qualifying, keep going, keep going again. Okay, now on the reserve list. So, how do you go from reserve to how do you go from reserve to uh, to the other one to the qualifying? 
is when there's withdrawal. That's all. And we have to take them in the order that they are there. I cannot say, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, this one uh, from uh, Belgium. Oh, I know him, the one from Belgium. Line number 58, uh, number 49, reserve number five. Oh, I know this guy is a very good guy. I think we should place him before uh, he, he's in the wrong spot. I cannot do that. I have to follow the order that is given to me, period. Okay, place a, a doubles. Uh, okay, so in this one, in this one, I just want to make sure if we go to the right completely, there should be uh, points, ranking points. Okay, world uh, ranking points. And no, notional points. Yes, right there. Okay, so the teams are the teams are right there. Where's their ranking at the BWF level? Right there. Now it happens sometimes that they play with a different guy. Example, on line uh, 18 from uh, China, from China, Wang. Uh, the next line. Yeah, this one. Uh, you know, they played with a different partner. That's why they have a notional ranking that is calculated by BWF uh, because one of uh, one of the partner of the, one of the guy was uh, was injured. So he played with another one, and based on points, um, this that gives them that ranking. Because if you notice, their world ranking point sixteen thousand seven ten. Well, notional ranking gave them uh, 33,420, which placed them in uh, 14 or something like that. Now, go down to Taipei. Taipei, if you, uh, yeah, that one. So if you notice on the rank zero, world point zero, two new partners, they have a zero. And there's another one after that from Thailand. Okay, same thing, zero. Well, then we have to go with notional ranking. And the notional ranking, there's a formula on that that is calculated by the BWF, by Pan Am, and you take it as is. Okay, good. If we can go to the uh, seeding, please. So oh, it doesn't matter which one, as you can see. Uh, now we we do a lot of of notional uh, when people have no ranking with the partner, and that's how we go. So it doesn't matter which one you take, like uh, men's doubles, women's doubles, the mixed, uh, and then the singles. Here you see qualifying. And then, uh, and then uh, the the reserve list and so on. Okay, so seeding. Now the seeding, the date for the seeding is different than the date from the uh, from the M and Q. Okay, because the the date is given differently to you from the BWF. Okay. If we look at this one, you know, Mr. Uh, Angus, his ranking had changed compared to Lin Dan. So if you look at the world ranking now, Lin Dan was 13, is still 13, but Angus is now 12. So this now means that once the seeding is done, the one that will be the very first name on the, on the tournament, is in Kalong Angus, period. Lindan will be completely at the bottom of the draw. Why? Because he is the second seed. That's all. Three, four are placed, and again, they are. They, they, they can be. They can be three can be on top or on the bottom, and five or so for four, and then after that, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, they, they are just placed in specific spots that's all uh new regulations also and i'm going to say it just in case you are not aware of that 
you can place somebody from your own country in the first round. Changed last year. I was very surprised. But that's just the way it is. You can place somebody from your own country in the in the first uh, in the first round. I actually had that from a tournament in in Malaysia, and uh, I said, "Was that a change?" And they said, "Yes, it is a change." Because I had not received the I had not received the email. They said, "Okay, no problem. There it is." Okay, so and then if you go up, we'll go. We'll see the the ladies singles. No, the the men's doubles, and then again, you know, ranking. And this is done. This is done at the BWF office. So uh, they are they are published, and you can access this all the time on the net. So if there is a mistake, if you notice there is a different, it, there is a period of time between the seeding and the draw. Why? So people can check this, and believe me, they do check it. In the, in the, the, in Asia, where there's a lot of badminton that is played, there are people with some association that this is the only thing they do. They check world ranking and they check seeding, and this is their job. I wish we would have that type of problem in the Pana. Okay, this is uh, for that part. Again, this is a very uh, this is a very important exercise. You will avoid yourself some problems by doing that work ahead of time. It's very important when you receive this that you check the list. You check that on if you're at the BWF level, you checked it against BWF. If you receive it from the Pan Am, you check it against the Pan Am list. If you do not, if you cannot access the Pan Am list, you said, Senor Salamanca, por favor, get me that list. Okay, so very important. If Any questions? Yes. And the last decision is the referee. Yeah. Every. And and don't and no discussion. Okay. No, dis no discussion. Uh, but I don't know. But the rules is the referee can uh, take a decision for the best tournament. For example, is two players or two teams of the same country. But is if the, for example, the the two players the same country uh, not have the problem is the have the match uh, between two players of the the same country. Yeah. Uh, you change or not change in this case? Uh, it depends. It depends uh, if this is agreed upon. Okay, I am telling you. The, the the rules and regulations of the BWF. Now, Pan Am may, in that case, because- Are you freezing? No, what I'm telling you is that if, if Pan Am had said, uh, for this tournament, as this is a, a, a future tournament, we want to, we want to have as many participate, participants as possible, okay, uh, that rule will not be enforced. And Panam has the right to do so. Where is this coming from? Prospectus. Everything written in the prospectus. Panam decides. Panam may say, yes, we will be having this, or no, we will not be having this. That's all. It's a question. Uh, the national ranking is only for uh, making to the main draw. It's not. It is a notion, uh, it's not used to to seeding. If you are a pair and have a national uh, ranking uh, good enough, but it's not good enough to have to be in the seats. You're That's right. My question. You're right. 
the, the, the best that you can be. If I if I recall, I had the I had the one like that once, and it was one out. Uh, you cannot, if I recall, is that you cannot be in the top four with notional ranking. You cannot be seated in the top four, even if your notional ranking point give you a higher ranking. I think it starts at the, the fifth seed. If I yes, if I remember. Yes. That's correct. Eleven point six point four. Okay. Eleven point six point. That's correct. Okay. Because because I had one like that in a tournament before, and I said to the guy, "No, you you cannot be in the top four. That's all." Other questions. Reason why I'm saying that we have uh, two videos coming, and um, and uh, it's it's situations that happened. Uh, we will not show you the. Uh, uh, the whole of the video, because in the very first one with the Spanish uh, player, um, there are things that we don't want to see. Uh, but the question is, as a referee, what do you do? You know, there's a situation that is going to arise. Final game. Love all. Play. So third and deciding game. Sung Ji Hyung, the number one seed, having taken the first game 21-15, but the reigning European and world champion, the left-handed Carolina Marin, coming back strongly in the second, taking it 21-14. The question mark in my mind is whether the Korean has got the stamina after some time off at the beginning of the year. Whether she's back to full fitness yet, I'm not sure. No, oh, that's clever. Good use of the body smash. Yeah, very clever. Oh, has she got that back? What a rally. Five, 
How on earth did Carolina Marin get that one back? I'm not quite sure. Deserved to be an outright winner. And still the rally went on. Yep, just long. Well, I think it was the right call made, but Sung Ji Hyung, understandably, just looking at the umpire because, of course, a, a yell of celebration can be perceived as trying to influence the line judge. But as I say, I think the shuttle most definitely was out. Well, a red card for Carolina Marin for misconduct, and I have to say, it went through my mind after she made the error that once again she turned away from where the shuttle had landed. No, come on, we need to hear this. Well, there's the red card. She says, what for? Well, she does have this habit of walking to the back of the court to talk to her coach rather than getting on with handing the shuttle back to her opponent. She was verbally warned, then she got the yellow card. Now the red card means a point. Wait a second to opponent. Carolina Marin, fault for misconduct. And again, another fault. So a second red card, does that mean disqualification? The umpire has got his hand up. He wants to talk to the tournament referee. He asked her to play on. Thank you, Ricardo, for bringing that now. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. The, the referee. Did the referee do what he had to do? Open question. Um, me, um, I think him, but maybe it's a wrong election for the this umpire for this this match, the first. It's the first. Um, and maybe it's my right to to the to umpire, but it's wrong the situation for me. Okay. But as 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 for the referee, did the referee do what he was supposed to do? Like I know the referee personally, I worked with him at a few tournaments and uh, i absolutely like to work with him you know i i know the whole thing because he explained it to me that's why i'm asking the question and i'm i'm not trying to put him down at all it's just we, we want to make sure that when we have situation arising that we know how to deal with this so that's why i'm saying that is there something that the referee could have done okay to prevent second red card or was Carolina completely in the wrong like she deserved it 
okay? So this is the point. Like, should have the referee be going to the court before? Why didn't he go to the court uh, when the uh, first red card was appointed? Thank you. Great question. And everything is there. Very important that you understand this. I was an umpire before. Uh, I know what this is to be an umpire. And before being in badminton, I was in ice hockey. So I've been officiating for a long time. Now, important. If there is a yellow card that is given, you're the referee. Make sure that you have eye contact with the umpire. If, if you need to know more, remember now that you have the right to get to the court. A few years ago, you had to be invited. Not anymore. You can go to the court. So in that situation, okay, yellow friendly warning given which is okay yellow card given knowing the player okay and by the way this this uh, video was analyzed by the people by, by the referees group at the last bwf workshop we we want to we want to make sure that we're all on the same on the same page with this and the Everybody came to the consensus. After the first red card, the referee should have been closer to the court. The referee should have gone to the court and talked to the umpire or talked to the player. Okay, considering the fact that the referee knew the player very well. And everybody knows that this player likes to take her time between rallies. So it was essentially that. And why I chose this video was, like I said, we discussed at the BWF level about this video, but it is important that you understand as a referee, there is a red card. Get to the court. Stop everything you do. Get to the court. Before everything just blows out of proportion. Okay. Daniel, question? No, 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 teacher. No, no, it's, it's okay. 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 Now, uh, the, the, the other one, and um, the other one is that I will talk about something that happened to me. It was in January 2016 in, in Malaysia, at, in Penang, Malaysia, in the semi-final, Li Chong Wei against Tomisu Diarto. And at the beginning of the match, uh, something happened. And uh, Li Chong Wei called for the referee. One of my deputies was close by. So the, ref the deputy went. And the deputy was from Malaysia. So Chong Wei said, no, I don't want him. OK? So it's important. Do not, I mean, unless you have I mean, if you are in your own country, you have no choice. But if you can send somebody else, can because what a player from your country is involved, send somebody else. So that's why Chong Wei said that. No, I don't want you. I want to talk to the big boss. He's not from my country. So then I go and I talk. What happened? What happened? What happened? And I talk to the umpire. And it's very important that when you go to the court, you try to get as much information as possible from the umpire. What I had to do was to change the call of the umpire on the court. Why? It's because the umpire gave the wrong interpretation of the law. This is something that you can do. Example. At 17, the umpire said to the guy, serve on the right side. Well, everybody knows that at 17, we serve on the left. 
But the umpire got completely confused and he said to the player, serve on the right. This is giving the wrong interpretation of the law. Okay, it is not a fact. If, if something happened on the fact, the shuttle landed in or out. Was it touching the line or not? This is a fact. There's nothing you can do about this. Zero. But uh, wrong interpretation of the law. So I, I made a big mistake when this happened. It took very, very long. I think it took over 10 minutes, which is way too long. We, when we go on the court to try to solve the problem, we try to have this done within a minute. And if it takes 30 seconds, that's even better. So, but in, in my case, it took like something like 10 minutes. Why? It's because the umpire did not want to tell me exactly what happened. It was very simple. He called a receiver's fault before the serve was delivered. The same way you cannot call, if you're the service judge, you cannot call the service fault before the service is delivered. The umpire cannot call the receiver's fault before the service is actually hit, before the service is done. So that's what I did. I changed the decision. So rather than being 644, Giarto, it was 544 to Giarto. Okay. And that's how it's the that's how the problem was solved. So first mistake of the umpire he made, he did not want to tell me what happened. I had to like just about uh, to twist his arm so he would tell me. Second mistake, and this one is the absolute worst that you can do on the internet, on social media, I call the receiver's fault on Chongwei on, uh, today. Oops. So, por favor, never, 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 ever use social media to talk about badminton. At the tournament where you are working. Somebody a few years ago was an, an very experienced BWF umpire, had received his call. He was doing the semifinal the next day between, uh, I think it was Lin Dan and Chong Wei, semifinal. And he put on the internet, hey, I got the semifinal tomorrow between Chong Wei and Lin Dan. Somebody called send an email to BWF said, look, what is this that your umpires are uh, know ahead of time and they put that on social media to impress their friends. And so the referee had no choice, but take the match away from that umpire. What is my point here? Uh, stay away from social medias. For us at, at the BWF level, like, I use social media, I'm on Facebook with my friends. You will never, never see any of my, uh, my, my posts about what happened at the badminton tournament. I'll go back to this in, in Malaysia in 2016. That night, I must have received 50 calls on uh, on Facebook, Eve, what happened? Eve, what happened? Eve, what happened? And my answer all the time in private to the people: no comments, no comments, no comments. Period. Okay. Now I talk to you about it. I'm telling you what happened. Okay. So this is fine. This was many many years ago, but I will not make comment on, you know, this is what the umpire did. That's all. So, that concludes my part for tonight. Other questions? 
One question, uh, Yves. Yeah. About the the betting. Uh, what happened is uh, you know about the pass, the 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 point, uh, the match uh, about the guys is near to close the the court. Uh, every is involucrated. Uh, no reimbursement the player, the umpire, anything. But this guy pass the 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 whole is the match in the shifting of the betting. What do you do? I I don't understand what you're asking, Daniel. I. <laughs> you, 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 uh, I, in Spanish to Ricardo? Yes, in Spanish to Ricardo because he, he'll translate. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Ricardo, no, I, ¿me escuchas, Ricardo? Mm, sí, Daniel. Dale. Eh, tuve un caso de, una, de un, una persona que pasaba los resultados, este, que estaba la hinchada eh, y sabíamos que, que estaba pasando para un sistema de apuestas. Okay, okay, Daniel. Gracias. If uh, Daniel mentioned that he has he had a, an issue with one guy taking taking notes for a beating company in one tournament. So, oh, okay. what 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 the referee have to do uh, with these situations? Very very good question, Daniel. It's good that you bring that up. We'll talk about it quickly. Uh, you have to be absolutely sure, absolutely sure that they are doing something that is illegal, okay, like in that situation. Um, and it, um, it may influence the result of the betting. Uh, example. In some tournaments, uh, there are betting companies that are there, and they paid a, a fee to the BWF for to have the right to have their people there, and they go with the bet and everything. Okay, but at the same tournament, and that happened to me. I remember in the in the Netherlands, where I knew one of the person and I knew that he was not there for any of the companies that were bidding. And he was isolated in the stands and he would transmit information. So I talked to the, the gentleman of the BWF that was there. I said, this guy there with the white shirt sitting right over there, uh, I know this is what he's doing. Okay, and they went and asked him to leave. That's all. They went with the police and said, sorry, you are not authorized to send information for betting in here, so please leave. And the person left. That's all. Otherwise, if there are no uh, betting that is done, uh, if nobody had paid fees uh, to, the, to the organizers in order to have betting, then it's, you know, it is, it is Technically speaking, not illegal. Not legal, but not illegal also. So well, there's really nothing you can do. Okay, just just to mention something uh, something in this point. So there is um, a campaign that BWF have, which is IAN Campaign Integrity, yeah. that talks about all, all these topics about betting. Mm -hmm. Also, it's very important to to take note about the, any person involved in badminton, like technical official, coach, organi, organi, local organizing committee can 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 bet in badminton, or or deliver information to other people. As if mentioned, there is. There are companies which have agreements with BWF 
to gather information from 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 betting but this this is all throughout the, the tournament software and and the live score and all this information go just through through their through their companies anyone or any person that we can or that we see is taking notes and transmitting information into the venue is illegal. And then you have to be 100% uh, sure that, that, this, that this person is doing this and then ask to the security to leave the, to this guy leave the venue. Yeah. Okay. No one can transmit information from the, from the venue. Yeah. It's all throughout the system just You're because because they have the statistics and everything. You are absolutely right, uh, Ricardo. And it's very important that, that you start to, to look a little bit for that. In the Pan Am, we do not have much of this, uh, but it, it's important that you, that you look around. You never know. And if you're made aware, you must report you absolutely have no choice if you do not report you you will be in more trouble than the person that is doing this okay so important ian yeah we had an incident at the manhattan beach tournament four years ago where i was deputy where bwf actually called through to say that somebody was feeding results um to the betting shops before they were getting published through tournament software i think they were adjusting they were claiming they were adjusting odds and stuff because the results were getting in the case of Manhattan Beach, it was fairly easy to identify the person because there was only one person in the gymnasium who wasn't a member of Manhattan Beach Badminton Club. And, and, and thanks for the information, you know. And, and if you are a referee, if you are a referee, you're at one tournament and uh, you see somebody that you suspect Make sure that your deputies are aware of it. Make sure that the local organizing committee are aware of it. Uh, the tournament I was talking about in the Netherlands, that guy, uh, that guy did the same thing, uh, a tournament where I was in Malaysia. Okay, we had identified him and uh, he was sending uh, he was sending information you know he well well i'd say it's not fair because the others you know are paying a fee to be able to to do this but this guy i had seen him uh, in malaysia and he was asked to leave and uh, in the netherlands as soon as i saw him i went to the organizer i said this guy there guy over there with the white shirt sitting right over there in Malaysia a little while ago he was in one of my tournaments and he was caught for uh, for sending the information so we asked him to leave so please make sure make sure that that we keep an eye on this guy because we don't want this to happen that's all so again, it, it is important, your role, you must, if you see, you must talk to somebody about it. Uh, believe me, if I go and work a tournament with one of you and, uh, and I see somebody is like that, that should not, uh, you will be made aware of it and very, very fast. So that's, that's why uh, it is important that we communicate uh, with this all the time. So, other questions? I'm not uh, uh, I'm PJ. this because I'm looking at the time. Yeah, PJ have the last one. I think PJ just PJ, participate yes. and then um, you have one question. Yes, Eve, could you, yeah. yes, do you have any advice on how to handle emails from players or coaches 
um, before tournament or also email you any, said yeah any emails that players may send to you are there any rules uh, are there any guidelines no any there, do's or don't there's there's well there's there's the common sense do's and don'ts okay there's the common sense but otherwise it, it has to be strictly related to the tournament like the player if the player is not happy about uh, look i should be seated uh, third on that tournament but i am not seated at all the answer is very simple please refer to ricardo at the panam office that's the panam office that is in charge of this tournament that's all or or talk to johnny at the uh, at the uh, national badminton association this is them that are in charge of that okay do not get involved if you don't have to uh like ranking seedings they will say something like that remember this you have to see that there is a problem before like before the tournament start as soon as you receive your your the, 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 the entries you look at it and you make sure that everything is right if if everything is right then you approve it you send it okay but do not get involved uh, you know because it is not your case i'll give you an example a few years ago uh, i think it was in puerto vallarta and um I received emails from from people said, "Well, I think there's a mistake because this player should be included in everything." And I respond very simply, "I am traveling right now to Puerto Vallarta. I will have a look at the situation when I arrive in Puerto Vallarta with the organizing committee, and uh, I will take the time to analyze that. Once I have all this done." I will reply to you. So, and when I arrived in Puerto Vallarta, I sat with Mr. Valdez and uh, he showed me all the information that he had. I looked at it and I'm sorry, but the person who had sent me the email did not have all the information. So how did I solve that? Very, very easily. I just sent an email to the to the person who sent me the email and I said, well, this is the information that I'm given based on the following email, period. Problem solved. I did not involve myself and like people with, oh yeah, but yeah, but this is a player from your country, you should do something about it. No, I have nothing to do about it. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm a, from a country or not. It has everything to do with, was the player registered? Yes or no? If the player is registered, then it's fine. If the mistake is done by us, by the organizing committee, we correct the mistake at the same for the same tournament. Senor Salamanca is sending me an email. Eve in men's double that age group, I forgot to enter one team. Problem very easy to solve, Ricardo. Redraw. We made the mistake. Once we made the mistake, we correct it. Does that answer, PJ? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Yves. Uh, You're welcome. I I think it's time to to finish this meeting. Please, Herman, uh, to the final words. Uh, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, thanks, Yves. Uh, another very, very interesting and important uh, presentation we have with all your experience on these matters. I'm happy that you are mentioning some of the issues at, at our events also, which are very common to our referees and empires, mm -hmm. no, in this case. So thank you for that. And thanks to all the participants and the questions they are submitting to you, because this is the right time to do this. And uh, well, 
thank Ricardo and the team in the office for putting this together. And uh, we'll see you next, uh, next Wednesday again. And as, as always, uh, stay safe, keep your good health, and prevention as always. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you to all and see you next talking about rules. A Badminton Panam Technical Officials Conference.